What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Boost to the Top VGC 2021. In the last episode I, I took some hard L's and also I'm running a bit late today, I have a lot on my plate so this episode will be unedited, I'm recording it. My microphone is being recorded through OBS rather than Audacity, there's not going to be any you know, audio leveling today uh, just because I'm running late for a couple of things and I want to get a video up to you guys anyway so... If you guys enjoyed this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, because I'll be bringing you guys some daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. And for today's comment question of the day, what do you think is going to be a Pokemon that rises to prominence as the metagame develops? Like, what's a Pokemon you think that, like, people are going to find out is, is really broken in, in the upcoming months? Just let me know. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. It looks like we're facing... Ooh, a really interesting team. Uh, Tailwind plus Lapras is something I don't really enjoy. However, Tapu Koko is still going to be able to set up screens. And the screens are pretty necessary to win in this match. Uh, I think Moltres has a place in this match. They don't have any electric types. Really, they just can hit me with probably a Life Orb on the um, on the G-Max Lapras. So I'm fine with leading Moltres here, to be honest. Uh, Kartana in the back doesn't look bad at all. And I think my last Pokemon has to be this Tapu Fini to help me deal with the uh, Urshifu, and to an extent the Metagross if I end up having to Dynamax it. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Now hopefully this comes out well, as in like audio level wise, because if it's bad audio audio level wise, there's not going to be a, I'm not going to upload this because I, you know, I'm recording everything through OBS, so I, I won't be able to level it as well as I would be otherwise. Alright. So there's Tebacoco Moltres. I don't think Naganadel has access to, um, I don't think Naganadel has access to Thunderbolt. I have to double check. Let me double check on Showdown. If it would load. My internet's been so slow lately. It does have access to Thunderbolt, but it isn't common. So what I'm going to do here is actually just go ahead and switch up my Coco for Kartana. And I'll go for the early Dynamax. And just max Airship into the Ganadel. Because they should go for like a poison move into the Coco slot. So I might be able to get out of the I might be able to get out of the situation without any damage to my Coco. As they do opt to Dynamax, it is gonna be that Naganadel. Makes sense. And because I do have a lot of HP investment on this Moltres, along with its gigantic 125 base special defense, I should be okay to take the hit, even if they don't target into the Coco. And if they end up targeting into the uh, Kartana slot, we're actually not in a bad spot. And, and by the way, yes, I am still kind of sick. I am still kind of sick. I'm going to turn down the in-game audio just a bit to make sure it's not too loud. I did some testing with audio levels, and I think it was fine, but I'll, I'll turn it down just to be a little safe. Turn it down just a little bit, because I don't want it to be, like, overwhelmingly loud. Otherwise, I have to scrap the whole video. There's the Tailwind, hopefully a max ooze into the Coco slot, which is now a Kartana and immune. Yep, there we go, which means next turn I can probably safely switch in <laughs> Tapu Coco or something, since they're not going to go for a poison move. And this max airstream is really big for me. Okay, let's go ahead and get in the... I mean, they might go for a fire move. I can go Finny pretty safely. Go for the max airstream into the Ganadel once more. And I'm thinking they, they might go for this max flare, because they tend to carry flamethrower to help check Kartanas. And if they go for a max flare into the Finny, I'm going to laugh. <laughs> I'm going to laugh a little bit. Max Wormwind, that's fine. I'm not quite in range of my Berserk ability, which is a little bit annoying. Let's get their Life Orb. That looks like Life Orb damage. Yeah, I was going to say. There's the Air Slash as they miss. Good for me. Get my Max Airstream off. Okay. And they definitely shouldn't feel safe going for a... They should not feel safe going for a... Um, poison move into the finny so what i'll do here is i'll icy wind and I'll also max guard because i think they have to target into moltres because i could always double back into kartana and it's just super unsafe to go for the poison move into finny when my moltres is on the field 
Like, there's too much risk involved in that. And if I get this Icy Wind off, I might just win. They max Flare? Okay. They tried to catch the Kartana. It did not work out for them. As they drop to their life orb, and I get my <laughs> I get my icy wind off. There's the air slash. Hopefully, no flinch. I would appreciate getting some damage here. And next turn, I can just start spamming at plus two speed my uh, my dark move. Because I'm not really scared of Metagross, I'm not really scared of Urshifu. There's a lot of things going my way, especially that crit. I would like getting my Coco on the field though to set up screens. Thinking about how I could have just attacked that turn and gotten to plus three. Now obviously I can't protect this turn. That's just not an option. And they could go for the close combat here. What I want to do is just go for the Moonblast into the Urshifu. And I might be able to take a close combat, I, I'm not certain. But I know that Tapu Koko most certainly can, so I'll just go ahead and target into it. I'll just double into the Urshifu. They go for close combat. I do not survive, but like I said, they can't knock out the Finny here, and they actually didn't go for the, for the Tailwind, which is interesting. They go for another Air Slash, let's see if they, let's see if they flinch me. Yep, there's the flinch. Um, but I can bring in the Coco pretty safely here. There isn't much that this thing can do unless it's carrying Poison Jab. And nothing on the field likes the Coco matchup. So what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and go for uh, Dazzling Gleam as well as a another Icy Wind. Because that'll pretty much catch everything. And if Tornadus wants to go for Tailwind here, that means on the next turn it'll still be slower than me. Yep, there's the Tailwind. I should survive whatever. Because he does have Wicked Blow, that won't that won't be enough to KO. Especially into Finny. Critical hit, yep. Makes sense, because it does that every time. Get my Dazzling Gleam off for the one shot in the Urshifu. And if I land this Icy Wind on the Tornadus, I'm not in a bad spot at all. Okay, cool. So now I'm faster than it. And depending on what's in the back, that sort of determines how close I am to winning. He's running Berry. Interesting. I get Papa Berry. Okay. So it's obviously a bulkier Tornadus. No Focus Sash on it. As his last Pokemon's Clefairy, I think that's just game. He doesn't really have an out here. Um, I should just be able to... Yeah, I, I think I just go for the Muddy Water, or the Icy Wind. And the Dazzling Gleam, and two of these will KO the Tornadus. It likely doesn't have Sludge Bomb or anything, as they forfeit. Nice. So we pick up a win for our first battle today. Alright. And let's keep going. I actually kind of want to see this. So yeah, I called the moveset on this guy. Life Orb? Light Clay. Okay. Or I guess the Life Orb was on the Naganadal. Makes sense. Black Glasses. Was there no Focus Sash anywhere on the team? That's interesting. In this format, Focus Sash is actually pretty useful. Especially when you have a Tornadus. Alright, continue battling here. Okay. I should have switched the music. I don't want to listen to this again. <laughs> As we match up with Ricardo here. Who's running a very interesting team. Looks like he's got Disquake there. <laughs> It'd be really cool if he was actually running Disquake. I haven't seen that in forever. Um... But no Insta Tailwind, so I feel comfortable leading off Coco. Uh, as well as Moltres. Do I want to bring Moltres? I think I bring Moltres here. 
in the lead. I'll bring Marowak in the back to hopefully catch a Thunderbolt late game. I think my last Pokemon is going to have to be either Landorus or Tapu Fini. I probably get a little bit more out of Tapu Fini. However, Landorus could be clutch. Actually, I kind of want to go Landorus. We'll, we'll go Landorus this game. And the reason I want to go Landorus is just because the Intimidate could be useful for the Garchomp. Uh, Max Airstream helps me out with uh, a couple of things. One, speed boosting if I don't end up going with the uh, Moltres Dynamax. Uh, it helps me beat Metagross with Max Quake. Since I'm running Life Orb, it's pretty easy to knock that thing out if it has any amount of chip on it. It's just a really good Pokemon. And once again, sorry, I'm kind of sick, so if I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit low energy today, that's why. Okay. What an interesting outfit. As he leads off Amoongus and Metagross, which... I'm cool with, to be honest. Um, I should be able to get off my Reflect here. And switch in my Marowak. And then I can just go for Burning Jealousy. Because he's probably just going to Dynamax. And go for the Spore or Rage Powder into my Moltres. So I'll get the Reflect off and go hard into Marowak. And Burning Jealousy should be free at that point. In fact, if I can finally click Burning Jealousy, it's been so long since I've clicked this. Each time I click it, I always misread the play, and it turns out they don't go for like a max airstream or anything. But I see very little reason why he wouldn't max Quake and uh, Spore. And because Mirawax touching the ground where Moltres was not, uh, this should be pretty safe. If he goes for a Steel Spike, I'm in a little bit of trouble, but I think behind the Reflect I still eat the hit. Even after that. And Reflect plus a burn pretty much entirely cancels out his uh, weakness policy that we're going to give him. There's the Steel Spike. Into the Coco. That's actually fine. Better than the Quake, to be honest. And you might be wondering, why run Burning Jealousy? Well, the reason is, for one, it's 100% accurate, um, and two, it can't be redirected. So, what I'll do here is I'll anticipate the Max Quake. Kind of want to get in Moltres, but it's just not worth it. I'll get my uh, light screen up. And we'll go for the Burning Jealousy here. Because he should always Quake, and barring a crit, uh, I'll be able to do this. If it doesn't quake, I'll be really surprised. There's the protect. Here's my light screen. There it is, the steel spike. That's even better than the quake, to be honest. Because now my uh, now my guy stays at full health. So we go for Burning Jealousy, and that's going to connect into this Metagross, likely giving it a weakness policy, but also burning it. Alright, nice. There's the weakness policy, it's all good though. It's all good. We have our, uh, <laughs> we have our Landorus in the back to pretty much wall him at this point. In fact, I might... I think my play here, since I'm going to outspeed this Amoongus, is just to... I think I just go for the max uh, airstream as well as a flare blitz into the Amoongus slot. Seems pretty safe. Those two will definitely KO it. Uh, Metagross with weakness policy while it's burned behind Reflect, it, it won't be doing much to our Moltres besides maybe giving us weakness policy with his supposedly Ice Punch. If he's not carrying Quake, which is really surprising, I don't see a reason why he wouldn't have Ice Punch.
There's the Airstream, and there it is, the Koba Berry. That's what I was fearing. Uh, that's why I didn't go for the Airstream initially. I knew it wouldn't KO, since Koba Berry or Sash are the two most likely items on this guy. And that into a Flare Blitz should do the trick. Even after two Steel Spikes. There's the Quake. We should eat that up. Yeah, does nothing. I mean, relatively speaking, for a plus two attack. We're going to outspeed now, and Flare Blitz should do it. Nice. So I think we just win this game now. There isn't much you can do to uh, come back from that. Dude, imagine if Alola Marowak had Regenerator over Lightning Rod. Or over Rockhead, imagine if you had Regenerator. That'd be so cool. There's the Tapu Fini. Yeah, there isn't much you can do now. Um, Tapu Fini is slightly scary, but I got my light screen up for a reason. I think my play here is just to go for a Max Darkness into the Metagross as well as a Flare Blitz, because those two should knock it out. And that'll put Tapu Fini in range, where it probably gets one shot by Max Airstream, especially if he gives me my weakness policy. It's a little Shadow Bone here. I don't expect Marowak to get this off, though. Just because, you know, slow Pokemon, he might be at plus one, but Tapu Fini tends to run just a little bit of speed. And since I'm absolute minimum speed, I don't get as much from my Airstream as another Pokemon would. Alright, and he'll go down to the burn at the end of the turn. Tapu Fini goes for Calm Mind, okay. I'm cool with that. I would like a weakness policy, please. Iron Head? No, he's just not letting me have it. He's just not letting me have it. But I do get a Shadow Bone off. And I can go for another Airstream into this Finny. And I still have a full health Lando in the back, which is really good. There's the Zapdos, which I'm completely safe from. So what I'll do here is I'll just max Airstream into Finny. Go for a Protect. Make sure I don't lose my uh, Moltres too early. And we still have screens up, so like a Moonblast isn't doing much. There's the Detect. Okay. Are I going to Muddy Water? To try to get rid of this, uh, try to get rid of this boy. Get my airstream off. Doesn't do as much as I hoped, but it's still in a range where if I get rid of this Zapdos, I can probably win with my Lando. As they calm mind up. Once again, I am Life Orb Lando, so it's more about getting rid of the Zapdos at this point, I think. And I can fish for a flinch, so what I'll do is I'll go for my, um, I'll go for my Fiery Wrath and just Flare Blitz into the, into the Zapdos for the KO. Because that combo should do it. I'm not certain about Shadow Bone, so this feels a little bit safer. Since I'm not running Absolute Max Attack, it, it feels like it won't KO. Shadow Bone's pretty underpowered compared to Flare Blitz. About 50% less strong. <laughs> so yeah. It's my Fiery Wrath, I connect. If I get a flinch on this Finny, I'll be so happy. Right on the Zapdos. There's the Hurricane. They connect into my Marowak. If I get a flinch on the Finny, I just win. Is there a Life Orb? Interesting. No, they just Calm Mind up again, which is actually sort of a huge mistake, because they're 100% within range of Earthquake plus Fiery range. Or even just Earthquake plus Air Slash. Unless they have a Berry, which... No, they're Leftovers. We're good. In fact, I want to force them into a situation where... Is that even worth it? I think I could just Earthquake, to be honest. Like, I don't need to uh, predict with this with the Zapdos, because it can't touch my side of the field, really. And it's probably going to protect. Yeah, okay. We'll just go for the Air Slash into the Tapu Fini, as well as the Earthquake. Or I could even fly to just to seal the deal. I could protect and fly. Oh my god. 
Hold up. That would actually do more than my other play, so I'll protect and I'll go for the fly. That's 100% accurate, right? 95. You better not miss, bro. You better not miss. Because if they go for the Moonblast or the Muddy Water play, this catches that. Okay. Cool. Penny protects. Epic, dude. Epic. We got him. Go for the fly. You get some leftovers recovery. I can go for my air slash into the flying. That probably will do it. It is a really strong attack. And this has a chance to flinch. 30%. Better than the uh, the other play I could make. Zapdos tries to double detect. Doesn't work. Connect my air slash. Fly. Yeah, we get the KO. Nice. Fly is one of the greatest mind games you could ever play, dude. I didn't even know it had Protect. I was just trying to catch it. Alright, and we will go for the Fiery Wrath into the Rock Slide, and that'll, that'll seal the deal. Good game, dude. Good game. And I'm going to call it there. Two wins today. Um, usually I do three games, but like I said, I am running behind on a couple of things. So a little bit of a shorter episode today. Thank you all for sticking around, watching the channel. I appreciate every single one of you. Leave a like if you enjoyed it at any point in time. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.